Are you at all surprised about what we saw yesterday? The Nasdaq hitting a record close, despite the fact that now it looks like the rate cuts will be pushed way further back. UBS out with a note saying there's a over 80 percent chance we won't see the first rate cut until September. I, I don't think it's at all too surprising. I think um, we have seen that play out in the first quarter. I mean, yields keep going up, but then actually markets actually kept rallying. So I think uh, markets are more focused on the fact that the U.S. economy is resilient. I mean, what do you prefer, a U.S. recession or low, uh, you know, high for longer interest rate? I think I would prefer no recession. So I think that that is actually what is what the data is telling us now, the U.S. economy can withstand high interest rates. So I think that's why in the face of high yields, uh, equity markets are still okay. Okay, so you think the markets are okay. I want to show a chart right here. This is the week to date for the Magnificent Seven, the S&P and the S&P Equal Weight. There's been a lot of talk about the broadening of the market and the S&P Equal Weight's the place to be, but this week it certainly was not. The Magnificent Seven far outperforming those other two indices. What does that tell us? Does that give us any insight about the direction of investing going forward? Well, I think that there is evidence of a broadening in the equity market rally in the first quarter. You see that primarily in the cyclical sectors. I think that's prim primarily based on the economic resilience story. I think that could continue. Um, but I do think that the Magnificent Seven will still be relevant, relevant and I think they will still deliver a big chunk of that earnings. And I think that's primarily because of the AI theme and also that ongoing uh, technology uh, innovation, etc. So talk to me about this AI theme. I mean, AI is supposed to increase productivity, but yet we continue to see earnings ex expectations decline from the start of the year. So if AI is going to be such a powerful force in the market that's fueling these magnificent seven stocks, why are earnings expectations falling and what does that mean? Well, I think that uh, earnings expectation has been very, very robust. And I think a, a little bit of slowdown in that is not uh, too problematic in our view. And I think actually if the earnings expectation actually came down a little bit, it means that if the actual data comes out better, then th there is more scope for the rally to carry on. And I think this is also not just a quarter on quarter theme. It is actually a multi-year theme that we're talking about. We're talking about a lot of uh, hardware and software upgrade, infrastructure upgrades, right. etc. So there's huge uh, opportunities there. Let's talk about another multi-year theme, oil. It was just kind of range bound for quite a bit. Now we're seeing it moving to the upside, even after a report saying that demand is going to fall by 7%. Um, it looks like some of that upside moves due to concerns about uh, supply security. How are you viewing oil? How do you see that impact in the markets going forward? It certainly is inflationary. It is. I think oil prices are quite hard to predict. I think right now we we have a supply deficit. I think that's what the IEA is forecasting for the rest of the 2024. I think, uh, of course, the geopolitical tension would be ongoing in the background. So that's why we have a long energy trade, actually, which is a basket of uh, long energy majors globally. And the thesis is actually primarily based on the fact that these energy companies are uh, improving their capital discipline and shareholders' return. But it is also acting as a hedge as inflation and also right. geopolitical tension.